Hi there! You're about to listen to a vintage episode of the Under the Microscope podcast. While the content is still as relevant and as interesting as when it was recorded, our webpage has changed. You can now find us at thesciencetalk.com slash real dash scientist dash nano. Welcome to Under the Microscope. This series is brought to you by the Real Scientists Nano team. Our goal is to provide a platform where scientists can communicate their work and interact with the public. With that in mind, every week we introduce you to a scientist working in the field of materials and nanoscience, who would be curating the Real Sci underscore Nano Twitter account. Hi everyone, today we have with us Pablo Ares, who is an assistant professor at the Condensed Matter Physics Department at the Autonomous University of Madrid in Spain. Hi Pablo, how are you? Hi, hello, fine, thanks. Great, let's talk, uh, continue talking about your science actually. Mm -hmm. So let's start by understanding your scientific career so far. So tell us how you got to where you are today, an assistant professor at the University of Madrid. Okay, so, uh, well, my my scientific uh, trajectory is maybe is not the, the standard one, let's say, because typically I would say you get your degree, maybe you do a master, then you get a PhD, go for a postdoc and go on and, and so on. But in my case, I was studying physics at the in Madrid at the Universidad Complutense, at the Complutense University of Madrid, mm -hmm. and in, during my last year I saw some advert on the faculty wall mm -hmm. uh, for a Spanish company uh, looking for, for a last year student to, to incorporate to the company, and I just had a look and it was a company, mm, a high-tech company, let's say, but a small one, a Spanish one, mm -hmm. making scanning pro microscopes, and I was one of my, my uh, let's say, lectures on, on that last year was uh, microscopy techniques and I, I had studied that things on that uh, subject and I, I love them so I said okay that, that could be a, I mean I had a, some feelings to start a PhD but I was not sure about that and maybe that company allowed me to be let's say be close to research and development but uh, not in a PhD so I was working in a company so I decided to apply and I was very lucky because they decided to, to hire me. Mm -hmm. So I was working for the company for, I would say, 11 years. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I had a chance to meet many researchers, to do some collaborations with them, to do some research, mainly development, mm -hmm. to learn a lot of different aspects of the scanning pro techniques, mm -hmm. mainly AFM. Uh, but unfortunately, in 2014, the company, uh, you know, uh, closed mm -hmm. because of the of the this global crisis that in, started in 2008, more or less, I guess. So at that time, uh, uh, one of the owners of the company, who was a professor at Universidad Autónoma de Madrid, at the Autonomous University of Madrid, offered me the possibility to to continue to continue some of the research I was doing in my part time, let's say, during, uh, in the company to continue it in his lab and, and got a PhD. So they had, they, he had an opening at the time at the university, so I just, okay, they said, it's fine. And he said, you can get the PhD and then, well, you do whatever you want. I mean, <laughs> so uh, in 2014, I joined the Autonomous University as an as a assistant, let's say, to get, uh -huh. uh, to, I, I also do, did some teaching and, and also get my PhD mainly uh, with, uh, using AFM and developing AFM to study different nanomaterials. Uh -huh. 1D, 0D, 2D, so that's why my, I mean, from my time at the company, I also had a lot of opportunities to, to interact with different researchers doing many different things. So I, I'm, let's say, I'm interested in any kind of nano things. That's my, mm -hmm. my, my point. Uh, mm -hmm. So I got my PhD in 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, as I told you, mainly uh, with uh, AFM and 2D materials in the end. So mm -hmm. one of the main achievements at that time was the, the, the isolation for the first time of uh, antimonin, a novel 2D material. Mm -hmm. I also, we talked about this in the short uh, podcast, <laughs> let's say. Yeah. And so uh, that's something which I, I'm 
really proud of, let's say, because it was predicted to have very interesting properties, but nobody was able to isolate it. So we were the first to, to do it and we opened the field on that, let's say. So once I, I got the PhD in 2017, I had the opportunity to join the graphing group at the University of Manchester. So that mm -hmm. was, uh, I mean, an awesome opportunity because uh, working on 2D materials uh, to be able to join the graphing group where, where the graphing was isolated for the first time with the Nobel prizes working there, uh, all the ambient there around this Nobel 2D materials and things was kind of incredible opportunity. So I moved there as a research assistant at the beginning and then when I was there, I got a Marie Curie fellowship. Mm -hmm. So in the end, I was almost there for three years. Mm -hmm. And at the end of last year, at the end of 2020, I, I, I finished the Marie Curie and I got this assistant professor position at the Autonomous University. So I, I went, I, I came back to Madrid mm -hmm. and that's where I am now. So. Wow, that's quite an interesting path you've had. I mean, from starting with industry, like solid industry experience yeah, yeah. of more than a decade and then entering uh, academia, but you were anyways part of the academia, the cool kids, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the good point of the company, it was that it was a small company, very focused on development and mm -hmm. also with a strong uh, links with research. Mm -hmm. So it gave me the opportunity to see a lot of, to meet a lot of researchers and also do some, did some collaborations in, in their research mm -hmm. and also sometimes during my, my company time and also in my part-time, let's say, I could do some research on my own. So in the end, when the company closed, it was not that strange to to continue this uh, this thing I was doing, let's say, for fun. So Right, right. Now you're doing that as part of the job. Like, that's yeah. your job now. The cool thing on the side is now your day job. So that's... Yeah, sure. So. That's really cool. That's, that's, that's really fascinating. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you, you talked about your journey and of course you have been working with um, scanning probe microscopies or AFMs in general. Mm. Um, and you already mentioned in the short podcast what you do, but where does your current research that you're doing right now at the University of Madrid, where does it fit in this big picture of materials and nanoscience? Where does it fit in? Yeah, I mean, after after my my experience with different nanomaterials and different, I mean, 0D, like nanoparticles, 1D, nanowires, uh, nanofibers, and 2D, different 2D materials and, and combinations of them in, in the so-called van der Waals structures. Mm -hmm. uh, my recent uh, research focused on, on, well, still the AFM technique itself. We are still developing it we, mm -hmm. because there are sometimes we want to do some experiments in which the standard AFM, let's say, Mm -hmm. It's not enough, so we just go a bit further. We try to do exactly what we just want to do, not mm -hmm. to be constrained by by an instrument, let's say. Mm -hmm. So that's part of my research. And the other one, now I'm more focused on on 2D materials, but also, let's say, 1D materials. So uh, we used uh, gold nano wires to, mm -hmm. we, we can just deposit them on a substrate, and by using an AFM tip, we can nano manipulate them and assemble them into mm -hmm. into what they are called nano nano electrodes. So when when two thin nano wires are brought together, they spontaneously cold weld upon mechanical contact. So mm -hmm. we can make a um, almost perfect uh, metallic contact there. So by assembling several of these nano wires, we can connect them. I mean, we can connect a let's say micro electrode with a nano object. In a, and that way, we can uh, uh, as, uh, do. Uh, nano electrodes for studying transport in, in, in at the nanoscale in a in a let's say novel way without needing to put resists or, or baking the sample or things like that. Mm. So we are using this 1D material, let's say, these nano wires to study transport, for example, in 2D materials on in other objects, nano objects, uh -huh. Uh -huh. using this approach. So uh -huh. we also study 2D materials to study uh, still. Um, let's say, basic properties. For example, one of my last uh, works that is in Manchester before coming here was to study piezoelectricity in monolayer hexagonal boron nitride. So mm -hmm. it was predicted that since monolayer hexagonal boron nitride, um, since it is a single layer, there is a symmetry, uh, symmetry is broken. Mm -hmm. So it was expected to present piezoelectricity, but it was not observed experimentally. So we used uh, uh, electrostatic force approach to detect the electric field generated by strain regions in, in monolayer hexagonal boron nitride. Mm -hmm. So 
I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to study different aspects of 2D materials combined with uh, 1Ds and, well, different things. <laughs> ah, okay, with, with ASM being at the focus of it all, be it uh, 0D, 1D or 2D materials, so you're basically yeah, combining. We also, we also take advantage of the possibilities of 2D materials. That part of my research in, in Manchester, we use 2D materials to assemble, um, let's say, for example, nano channels. Mm -hmm. And in these nano channels, we could trap uh, water, so we can we can study the the properties of water under extreme confinement because it's just we, we went down to let's say two or three layers of water up to let's say bulk depending on the thickness of the channel. Mm. So we could uh, study the the property the dielectric properties of of water confined, and we found it was it had a, a anomalous behavior and it was extremely uh, uh, challenging to do that and. and yeah. I can imagine trapping water in such confined space and then yeah, studying yeah, yeah. how it behaves. That 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 could be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, challenging. Uh, I mean, I, in, my, in very much I was working with uh, Laura Fumagalli, who she's an expert on dielectric microscopy with mm -hmm. AFM. So mm -hmm. we were doing this kind of research, and that was a, a very cool experiment. So <laughs> we are still <laughs> working on really that now. Cool. She's, a, she's in Manchester and in Madrid, but we continue the, the work, so. Right, right. And speaking of cool experiments, uh, the next question <laughs> is, uh, I know it's a difficult question, uh, but um, I'm sure you, are, you, are, you have been involved with a lot of cool research projects, uh, but you have to pick one, the most favorite one. It, I know it's a difficult one. I know it's a uh, difficult one. But if you have to pick one, could you pick one and explain it to us in simple words in the section we call In Other Words? Um, mm, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I, maybe I can talk about two of them because in the end they are a bit uh, uh, linked. So uh, I already mentioned about this uh, nano wire thing we do to to um, to fabricate nano electrodes. So mm -hmm. this probably could be my favorite because it involves uh, different I mean, scanning probe microscope with manipulation with nano things. So that's quite cool. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, the other one would be these uh, studies of antimonin, this novel 2D material. Mm -hmm. So uh, an experiment could be the use of these nanowires to study the transport properties of antimonin. So at uh, that time we were able to isolate this antimonin, but uh, I mean by mechanical exfoliation, you know the Scotch tape method, as graphene was exfoliated for the first time. Mm. But the thinner, the thinnest um, flakes we obtained were re relatively tiny in x y dimensions. So mm -hmm. they were not easy to contact by standard techniques, by EV, lithography or things like that. Mm -hmm. Could be done, but it was not easy. And we tried, and there was also some problem with contamination and so on, and we didn't get transport measurements with, with standard EV lithography uh, electrodes. So mm -hmm. we used these nanowise electrodes. In fact, mm -hmm. it was the, the, the development of the technique was was pushed by this because we, we were not able to study the transport properties of this antimonin. Mm -hmm. So, and, and with using the standard technique, so we thought about alternatives. And we thought, we thought about this, these mm -hmm. nano-wise uh, things. And so we tried and, and we did a cool experiment in which we assemble a, let's say, long nano electrode to connect several of these uh, flakes mm -hmm. and study transport properties um, with them. So maybe oh, wow. this could be the, the one I would pick. <laughs> Right. Wow, that sounds really cool. That that is. I never thought about it because with lithography, of course, you need a, a certain size of of the flake uh, of the of the two D material. So, and with mechanical exfoliation, you it's it's a sheer luck sometimes to get I mean, big. Yeah, flakes, we, right? you graphene on other two D materials, you can get very now big flakes of several tens of microns at least. But right. this this uh, antimonin, since the interaction between layers is stronger. Mm. Uh, it's difficult to, to to exfoliate it. That's why it was not done at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. and, and the thinner ones we get, they were relatively tiny. And I mean, not not so tiny that they could not be connected with uh, standard techniques, but not easy to do it. And then we also found this problem of maybe it was the resist that left contamination. And we don't know what, but we tried and they were not conducting. I mean, there was no current through the path through the electrodes. But right. we did this thing with the gold nanowires, and then we used 
a metalized AFM tip as a second mobile electrode, so uh -huh. we can probe the transport between the, let's say, gold nano electrode and the AFM tip uh -huh. at different distances. Uh -huh. So um, it worked. So. <laughs> that is so cool. And I have a very simple question for you, for you with this antimony. Uh, with graphene, I know that you can see it under optical microscope uh, with if the silicon oxide is like what, 80 uh, nanometers or 100 well, nanometers? Depends. Yeah, 90 or 285. Or, 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 right. Yeah. Uh, what's the trick with antimony? Can you see it with the optical microscope, under the optical microscope? or you Yeah, only we can see it with optical microscope. microscope. In, in fact, one of the first things we did after uh, exfoliation uh, was to, to do an optical study similar to what was done with graphene and other 2D materials to see which were the, the optimal thicknesses and, and if, if it was better to to observe to, to see it with with a particular wavelength or, or just white light or whatever mm -hmm. and in the end uh, what we observe is that it was something I mean not exactly maybe the same ranges but similar to graphene mm -hmm. the problem was that the, the monolayers we found were, were just um, let's say terraces or other bigger flakes mm -hmm. so Optically, they, we could not distinguish them. Mm -hmm. Typically, what we see is that with the optical microscope, we see bigger flakes and thicker mm -hmm. of the order of maybe, I don't know, up to 10 nanometers or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then when scanning with AFM around these bigger ones, we usually find thinner ones and smaller ones, which con can contain ah. maybe a small part with one layer or two layers or something like that. So, Aha, okay. Yeah, so the the monolayer region it was quite small, let's say. That's the truth. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Wow. Okay, so even to locate it, you need, uh, you can't just do it with optical microscope. You need the scanning uh, from yeah, microscope. Yeah, I mean, with the optical microscope, we see, the, let's say, the bigger flakes. The big ones, we go yeah. there with the AFM and around the bigger flakes that are it's optically the visible, scan we scan and we see the, the smaller ones. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Well, this is more complicated, way more complicated than I would have thought. Uh, well, I can imagine why you picked this as uh, one of the projects that you have, you, one of the favorite ones, let's just put it that way. Let's not play favorites here. Um, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And I said this before as well. I mean, you are doing quite a lot of interesting projects and you're, you you clearly like to do the research because you, yeah. after industry, you came back, like you did your yeah, PhD yeah. and now you're uh, an active researcher. Um, as a scientist, research is one big aspect of your uh, life as a scientist. But other than that, uh, what else do you like um, as uh, being part of of a scientist, an active uh, scientist, other than the research aspect of it, going in the lab and doing the work, what else do you like? Yeah, well, uh, one of the things I like is uh, is the, the let's say creativity we have to have. For example, this thing we came up. Let's try to to do these things with the nano wires, and we were able to assemble them and do these uh, nano electrodes. So we we're all, we're always thinking on on things to let's say solve problems in the end. But in this case, related to science, but I mean, could be other things. So, uh, and for that, the, the one of the things I like most is, is um, to, to, to be doing new things every day, let's say. Not to mm -hmm. be stuck on one thing every day, I just don't have to move this from this place to the other, and I'm doing that thing 100 times a day. Uh, I, I'm doing new things every day, let's say, more or less. Not, not every day, but... <laughs> <laughs> But Almost every day. We, we are always thinking in, in new things to do and how we can do this or how can I study this other thing that I'm interested in. So then, that's one of the of the things I, I like most. And the other one is just like, like the possibility to to just to talk with other scientists and, and or with other people. I mean, sometimes it's not a scientist, someone you are talking about your things and seeing from a different point of view, they can give you a very good idea. So mm -hmm. to share uh, the results, to share the ideas, to share what you're doing with other people, it's also something I, I, I enjoy quite a lot. Ah, that's um, really nice. Yeah, creativity and communication and collaborating with other yeah. people. Uh, that's mm -hmm. You're right. I mean, we... we we rarely speak about how uh, much creativity one needs uh, to be a scientist. Do you need to solve, like, what you mentioned with the antimonine, uh, to... to, to Put these contacts this is creative work this is like an <laughs> artist's work you have to be creative and innovative uh in order to solve the problems the scientific problems um so yeah i'm glad that you like that that's really good uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good so um 
Pablo, if, if uh, I were to ask you, what advice would you give to the researchers or kids or scientists starting out now? Um, could you share? Yeah, sure. Um, well, uh, if they are, have been listening to the podcast, they have realized that I've been working in many different things. Mm -hmm. So uh, one uh, piece of advice I would give is try not to follow just one line of research because, mm -hmm. I mean, try to follow, if you are interested in different things, try to Sometimes it's difficult to work in parallel in different things, but I would say try to do it because uh, apart from, le from from learning and from, from getting the results of different things, uh, if you are just only focused on one experiment and it fails, because that happens, we all know that, that experiments sometimes fail and you don't get any interest. I mean, all the results are interesting even if it fails, mm. but you don't get any, let's say, result that let you go on in some way. Uh, then you get stuck and that could be a, a problem in your career. So if you can follow a couple of lines, three lines with different things you are interested in, it could, that could be uh, good in case any of them fails. So mm -hmm. this is this would be my advice. <laughs> right, to have like backups, like plan B, plan yeah, C. Yeah, maybe you have, a, of course, you may have your main experiment, your main line of research, but maybe you have a side experiment that in the end could be, that, that side experiment could be your main experiment. For example, let's see graphing. Graphing was just a side experiment they were doing on Fridays after Friday Friday evenings. Like let's try different things and in the end see what, what it come become became now. So right. So that, right. that that's my advice. <laughs> That's a really good piece of advice, absolutely. And as you mentioned, Graphene came out, the Nobel Prize, the, the discovery behind the Nobel Prize came out of what, Friday afternoon experiments, like yeah. fun things, let's just mm -hmm. do out of the box yeah. uh, thinking. And now we yeah. see where Graphene is and how much yeah. research uh, yeah, yeah. gets. So, and it has led to 2D family and like it's still yeah, I mean, being field. So. I mean, one of, one of the things of Graphene is a part of Graphene itself and all its amazing properties is that they, they it open the new to the material family so that's one of the almost big things of graphing so and it, it came from a side experiment so that's absolutely <laughs> absolutely that is some real fine piece of advice absolutely um pablo i hope your research experience has been wonderful it sounds like it has been wonderful mm. so far and i hope yeah. it will continue to be wonderful in the future as well However, if you had three wishes to improve your research experience, what would you ask for? And I'm not promising anything here. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, as, 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 I, as I told you, I, I think up to now I'm very fortunate because I, I've been able to work in different, I mean, in industry, research, academia. And I've been very lucky because I have met very good researchers and very good people in all, the, in all these different areas. So I have learned a lot from from many different uh, fields, all of them related to nano, but in the end different fields and mm -hmm. different people. So in that sense, I'm, I mean, I'm very lucky. I cannot complain at all of anything. Mm -hmm. If I would have to ask for something, I mean, I would I would say just to be able to have more time to <laughs> to, to learn more things. Let's say I would like to. I mean, I'm 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 mainly use scanning pro microscopes but uh, uh, but i would like to uh, I, I also use another techniques but maybe not in the, all the depth i would like so i would like uh, if i had more time or i would like to to learn more in in depth uh, you know raman spectroscopy or or to use i don't know uh, a, a fib a fib uh, system to to do nano things in with other techniques Mm. or to learn to go, I mean, not, not in depth with theoreticians because that's, a, I'm, I'm a poor experimentalist, let's say, <laughs> but yeah. to, for example, you know, this kind of uh, programs like Comsol to do finite element analysis. Mm. To, I, I, I have some idea, I can do some things, but to go deeper on that or, I mean, that would be my wish to, to have more time to, to see other, other techniques or other things in, in with more, it's a more mm -hmm. profound yeah. Uh, way, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. So you only have one wish to, to know a bunch of uh, uh, tools yeah. or ways to, to, to go in, in depth. Uh, you only have that wish, no, no tools, um, second or third wish? Yeah, as I told you, I mean, in my trajectory, I, I think I'm, I'm very lucky, very fortunate the way it has gone, the people I've met, the things I've worked in. So... Yeah, I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. 
I'm glad to hear that. And I hope um, you have more time. Or let's just put it that way, that you just learn super quickly. Like one day you spend with the uh, focus iron beam and you just, uh, all, everything is absorbed. Everything is... That uh, would be perfect, yeah. That would be perfect, right? <laughs> After uh, which, yeah. If I go one day with a focus iron beam and learn it, wow, that would be awesome. That would be if amazing. If I go one day with Raman spectroscopy and I learn all the details of Raman and how to interpret all the peaks and everything, that would be perfect. <laughs> Or also, I, I had some experience. I went, I've been at, at, at synchrotron facilities, uh, but of course I'm not an expert at all. So, but to, to be able to, to know more about the, the synchrotron radiation experiments and to, and to interpret them better, all that things would be, of course, perfect if I just, you know, like in Matrix, that they just plug a cable to you and download the whatever. <laughs> a helicopter, helicopter uh, piloting, and you became an expert in piloting <laughs> and helicopter, thing like that. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we, we, we need someone to work on that. Let's let's think about the research project here and apply for funding to develop this technology. I mean, I, sometimes I think that, that society is going that way because nowadays I, you don't you don't know anything about something. You just Google it, and okay, in in a, in a couple of minutes, let's say, or at least in an hour, you read something about the things and. And you know what you're talking about a bit, let's say. A little, it's, yeah. it's not like I'm in that they just plug you, they, they loaded your the software for doing Kung Fu and you were a, a, an expert. But in the end, we are going like, you don't, you cannot say, I don't know that. You can just give me a couple of hours and, and, and you get some <laughs> idea at least. So. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, that would be really nice. That's a really cool wish. I want that too. Uh, I want that to happen uh, to me as well. So that's wonderful. I hope it comes true uh, in the next five years. Let's just give it five years and maybe we can talk in five years and see where the technology has, um, how far it has come. Um, but yeah, no, this has been wonderful, Pablo. Your research is amazing. A really, really exciting work. Uh, but before I let you go, I have one question, one last question for you. Um, and we can't uh, not talk about the year 2020, um, the interesting year 2020, for lack mm. of a better word, uh, which has spilled uh, over 2021 as well. Um, so what are your learnings from the year 2020? Um, well, one thing I would say is that uh, the ability to adapt is essential. I mean... We, we 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 have to be able to adapt to changes because otherwise i mean we are screwed up so we need to be able to i mean we, if we are now we have a pandemic like we are still now to be able to 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 work from home if it is needed or to just go to the lab maybe once a week to launch something and maybe be able to control remote or to change the way we work change the way we interact so in the end we, we need to be able to adapt to changes because otherwise uh, if, if this goes on or, or in a few years it comes a different thing but we don't know what we have to be able to, to adapt so this is one of, of the learnings and the other one I think is um, that in the end I mean we are scientists and in the end science is getting out is getting us out of this thing because, mm -hmm. you know, in particular, in this case, nanoscience, because, you know, mainly these vaccines, we are able to encapsulate mRNA into a nano li liposome or whatever and put this into a vaccine and inject. So uh, I think this is the importance of science and, and people should, I mean, we are all, I mean, scientists are, of course, aware of the importance of science, but maybe we should be able to, to, to explain it maybe better to the society to, I mean, just to to let them know that, I mean, we, I'm, we are doing this in part for fun, this is my case, but not mm -hmm. only for fun, just because we, we are truly convinced that this will help other people in different ways. We never, uh, sometimes you're studying something that could, in the beginning, could you never know how it will help other people, but then yeah. in the end, it does. Let's see, just an, a quick example. Uh, Einstein's uh, relativity, general mm -hmm. relativity. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, all GPS systems work following uh, Newton's relativity. So, who would say at that time that that theoretical work that explains well things that nobody understand apart from from here at the beginning mm -hmm. would uh, be so important in all the all the positioning systems in the world? So, all all, mm -hmm. all mobile phones have GPS. 
all things, all the satellites, everything. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, the, 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 in, in, in summary, this, this learning from 2020 would say that uh, science is fundamental for, for the advancement of, of the humanity, let's say. So, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Adaptability <laughs> and just value science and value yeah. scientists <laughs> appreciate uh, yeah. the work that is happening. Don't just say that, oh, we don't understand it, it's too basic or anything like that, because you never know never what. Know. Or for example, this this uh, the CRISP, which were awarded the Nobel Prize recently. Mm. Uh, it was a it, maybe many people doesn't know it, but it was a Spanish guy studying some I don't know some I don't know exactly which which uh, which biological system, but he was studying something which in principle was not uh, related to anything, and he found this thing, and and then it was developed to do all the CRISP things that, that they are doing now. But in principle, he was studying something that he was interested in. In his, uh, he was in a in a small university at Spain, studying something from the sea around his university, mm. and in the end, all these things came up. So you never know where the big advances will come from. So all all kind of science is is very valuable. Important. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's a good note to end the podcast. All kinds of science is important and valuable, so appreciate yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Pablo. This has been wonderful. Looking forward to having you on Real Scientist Nano. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. Thank you for listening. To know more about us, please visit our website, realscientistsnano.org and follow us on Twitter at realsci underscore nano.